Welcome to another video. I am the Starman. Now, I've not had a video out for a while, uh, mainly because my computer's playing up and it's kind of in limp mode at the moment. Um, I've got a Dirtle Door video coming up next, so look out for that when I finally get around to it. But anyway, I want to talk about the Perseid Meteor Shire in this video and how you can see it. Now, the Perseid Meteor Shire peaks next week. Um, anyway, just before I do that, I'm just going to show you something quickly. Check, check this out. Now then, this is the all new star bus. What do you think? Some of you might be able to tell the gaming reference there with the thumbs up chat. And on the back. Now, if you're a keen eyed astronomer, you might be able to tell that there's a star missing on the uh, the plow there. Well, I'm going to get that corrected. Don't worry about that. So there you go, the all new star bus. Really, really pleased with what I've done with it there. Um, it's about time really. I've been meaning to do that for ages. But anyway, in this video, I want to talk to you about the Perseid meteor shower, which peaks next week and give you some tips on how to see it and how to photograph it. Right. Okay. So I've just come onto this golf course because it was absolutely Oh, it's just so busy down on that road there. So noisy, the traffic and everything. We're near the hospital here in Blackpool and it's a really, really busy road around this part. So anyway, uh, yes, the Perseid Meteor Shower. Now the actual peak is on Wednesday the 12th into the morning of Thursday the 13th. That's, that's when you're most likely to see the meteors. Now you could see them the night before on the Tuesday possibly. And you can also see them after because the Perseid meteor shower does have quite a long activity. You know, in fact, it's active now. But yes, Wednesday the 12th into Thursday the 13th is going to be the best time to look. And in fact, after midnight, certainly, the more chance you're going to have to see them because the constellation of Perseus, which is where the Perseid radiant is, gets higher in the sky after midnight. Now, I just want to talk about the rates of the Perseid meteor showers. Now, I think the Perseid meteor shower is the second best meteor shower after the Geminids. Now, the reason I say that is because although there are quite a lot of these Perseid meteors, like the Geminids, you get quite a lot of them. They tend to be very, very quick. They tend to be very fleeting compared to the Geminids, which tend to have a, like a slower kind of, they tend to move slower across the sky until you get more chance to see them. Another thing about the Geminids is it's in the middle of winter. So it's not a very good time to be viewing meteors unless you're somewhere warmer. Um, like I've viewed them from Tenerife and seen literally hundreds of Geminids in Tenerife. But anyway, the Perseid meteor show is very good. The, the rates are very good. The zenithal hourly rate is 120. Now that means, there's a caveat to that, that means that the zenith, which is straight above your head, that's taken into account that the constellation of Perseus is straight above your head and you have all sky vision. Now that's just never going to happen. So when you hear about zenithal hourly rates and it says 120 for the Perseids, forget that because you're never going to see that many. Not a chance, unless we happen to have a storm, which, you know, is possible. Sometimes when we're going through, we're going through the path of a comet, uh, Comet Swift Tuttle, we go past it every year. The Earth orbits around the sun and it goes through the path of this comet every year. So we know when these Perseids are going to happen. So the zenithal hourly rate, you need to take that with a pinch of salt. And another problem we've got is we've got the moon is going to be in our way this year, unfortunately. It's not going to be a big moon. In fact, on the on the night of the peak, on Wednesday the 12th, the moon, well, the moon doesn't actually rise until the morning. I think it's going to rise after midnight, which is going to be the best time to look, actually. I just had to move them because there's some golfers over there and I thought they were going to hit the ball towards me. Anyway, yeah. So on the, on the 13th, on the morning of the 13th, which is when the peak is going to be, the moon is going to rise. Now it's going to be a waning crescent almost. It's going to be about 40% bright and it's going to rise sometime after midnight, quarter past midnight, depending where you are. And it's going to rise in the, in the east northeast part of the sky, which is where the radiant is, by the way. So the best place to look is going to be away from the moon. Um, the moon is going to drown out some of the lighter 
some of the, the fainter meteors, but hopefully we'll get some nice fireballs. Now, I have picked up fireballs myself, and I'm just gonna show you a picture on the screen now of one that I caught a long time ago. Now, I've never captured a, a really quality picture of a Perseid meteor along with a landscape, but I did get this shot way back, it must have been seven years ago at a star party with my astronomy society. And uh, you can see there that uh, the meteor is shooting right through the plane of the galaxy absolutely uh, bang on there and also as well you'll notice that it's got quite a long train and the reason for that is because it's a long way from the radiant that was a really really bright meteor it lit up the whole sky and you can see as well that it has different colors it's had red greens and those are the ways that you can tell these meteors from satellites and anyway i saw it with my own eyes anyway but, but a lot of the times if you're trying to take a picture of a meteor you'll pick up things like satellites and you look at the photograph and you think oh that's a meteor but no it's a satellite unless you actually see it and you know oh i saw a big flash in the sky there then you know it was a meteor well i saw that one and it lit the whole sky up anyway so if you want to try and capture some of these perseid meteors you want to use a wide lens something like a, a 14 mil to 20 mil, something like that, uh, 24 mil maybe, yeah. and open the aperture as wide as possible. So if your lens opens up to f3.5, use it at f3.5. Boost your ISO as well. Put your ISO up to 3200, uh, 3200 or, or something like that, maybe a bit more, and use a shutter speed of maybe 10 to 15 seconds. You don't want to use too long of an exposure at the stars in the photograph trail so you want to use the 500 rule so if you want to know about the 500 rule you can look it up i haven't really got time to go into it now but basically you divide 500 by the focal length of your lens and that gives you a, an ideal time that you can take a picture of stars without them trailing um, so if you use a 20 millimeter lens you can take a picture for 25 seconds so just to give you some sort of idea so anyway that's my little video um previewing the perseid meter shot i'll probably do another video hopefully when i get closer to the time or maybe even on the night itself uh, if you're a new subscriber as well thanks for subscribing i hope you like what i'm going to do i've got quite a bit of catching up to do actually um because i've not been putting that many videos out lately if you like this video uh, hit the like button and if you want to see more like this, uh, hit subscribe and also tick the little bell at the top for notifications of new videos. And I wish you great luck in uh, seeing and photographing the Persian meteors. And I will see you again on the next video.